Hey everybody, Mike here with everything about concrete.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how we form up, pour, and finish this concrete patio slab. Now, if you're new here, Mike's channel is all about concrete work. My company, Days Concrete Floors, specializes in all types of concrete flat work here in Maine. This is a pretty typical job site for us where we have a house floor, we got a garage floor, we got patios on it, and we we're hired to come in and do all the flat work on these jobs like this. So that's what my channel is about, showing you and teaching you how to do concrete work. So if you like that kind of stuff, please go ahead down there and hit subscribe. If you're a returning viewer, well, thanks for coming back. Now, what we're doing right now is this, this house and garage and patio all had a frost wall put in. So the, around the patio here, we're just forming up using Tapcon screws with 2 by 8s uh, to get the height of the patio slab, we were told the top of slab wants to be down four inches from the house. So I, you can see a chalk line we snapped on the foundation down four inches. And then we're sloping the patio about an inch out here towards where we're putting these forms on. So it's going to have a little bit of a slope on it. It may or may not have a roof over it when the house is built. I don't really know. I don't get into that part of the details. We're usually on the job site at this point and that's it. I don't usually go back afterwards because, you know, this is this is about a 45 minute from my shop. Um, occasionally I'll get to go back if we don't do everything all at the same time. But when we're hired to come in and do stuff like this, we typically like to get all this concrete work done and out of the way before they start doing the framing. Now with the access to this particular pad wasn't very good that uh, when they backfilled around the foundation they kind of used sand so we we had already got one truck stuck when we did the house floor so we didn't dare try to back another truck around that's why we're using the conveyor truck here today on this one there's also the what the plan called for was um they called for wire mesh in this but there's a nationwide shortage in, in wire mesh. See, we just can't get it. None of the supply stores around here have it, and they haven't had it for over a month. So we just compromised, and we, we're using fiber mesh in the concrete, and then we're going to put a double row of rebar around that outside edge, and that's what the GC called for. The, one, the guys that hired me are the ones that made that decision. I didn't, so I'm just here as a sub putting in the flat work so that's what we're doing we're just doing what we were told but we can't get wire and we still can there's no there's no uh, nobody's telling us when we'll be able to get it so the fiber mesh we use fiber mesh in everything anyway we never have any trouble with the fiber mesh and we're going to put some you know we'll joint this to help control cracks so there, sh there won't be any issues we do it like this all the time so that's me and luke on the straight edge we're getting this thing screeded. It's about, I think it was about, that's a 14 foot straight edge. So it was about a 14, 15 foot patio by 20, I think it was around 24. Just going to have a light broom finish on it when we're done. We're actually, we poured the garage floor, which you can't really see too good. That's in the background over there on the right already. And then we're pouring this patio that you see right here. And then over towards the right, there's another patio. You can just kind of see the front of the concrete truck over there that we're pouring. So there's actually three separate pours we're doing here this morning on this one. Darren's going to get that bowl floated. And then, so this is about, probably about, well, it was actually right after we got done pouring that front patio. The concrete was actually setting up pretty fast today. So maybe about 20, 30 minutes after we got done pouring this. I'm cutting in the edge. We just use a basic simple edger for this, you know, a brass edger with the edges that are tipped up. Just enough to get a rounded edge on it. Um, strengthen that edge up a little bit, gives it a little bit more of a finished look. And then we're gonna run a joint right down the middle of this one. That's all That's all the, the people wanted for a joint. They didn't want this thing cut up a lot, so. We're just going to get that one joint in it, and that should control any cracks in this thing. So I got it measured out. I just basically measure from one end. I don't know, it was around 13 feet. Put a mark with my finger, and then we use that uh, we use that joiner with a handle on it, 
and the screed helps keep it nice and straight. And if you get it cut in early enough, that's really, really easy. To, that's an easy way to cut joints in right there. I have a link for that joiner down in the description, guys, if you want to check it out. That's a pretty easy way to do joints. So as you can see, Darren's way over there on the right. He's kind of working on the garage a little bit. Uh, Luke's starting to mag float the surface of this. Now we have air entrainment in our concrete because in Maine we get a lot of freezing and thawing, usually, usually towards uh, from th Thanksgiving until about the first of April. So there's like three and a half months, roughly, that we'll get a lot of freeze thaw cycles. So we have to have air entrainment in our concrete, and because we do on exterior concrete, we don't steel trial our exterior concrete because if you steel trial the surface, it tends to want to trap either some air or even moisture in there even after you broom it it still it still can trap some in there and that at least leads to scaling where we're from so we always try to keep the surface as open as possible so we'll just mag float it like like luke and i are doing right now if we have to mag float it twice we'll mag float it twice if uh, we think it needs it this one here was setting up pretty good on us it was pretty firm so we're going to be able to get a really good room finish on this just by mag floating it this first, this one time. It's it's a pretty tight mag float. And, uh, you know, we use a pretty fine broom, so it leaves it a really, really nice room finish on it. You can see I'm over there with the broom. Darren's just touching up that corner. And I'm just going to pull it back nice and slow and straight. That's the key to the broom finishes, you know, slow and straight so they don't chatter. They don't have funny looking lines and, and they look really, really nice when you're done. He looks just kind of finishing up the using the funny float. The funny float on something like this, it really saves you from getting on it with skids or knee boards. So that's, that's a big bonus right there, having that with the handles along with that joiner. That's the basic broom finish right there. I mean, it doesn't get any more basic than that, really. This actually would have looked really nice stamped, I think. You know, an Ashley Slade or even just a stone texture stamp would look really cool on this, but this is all they wanted. We're pretty, pretty fussy about how our brooms look, so we go nice and slow. We don't typically push and pull. I see a lot of guys out there, they'll push it and then they'll pull it back. And that's okay too. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, I just like to pull it. If, if that's all the concrete needs to get a nice fine broom finish, we'll just pull it nice and slow. And it leaves those broom marks nice and fine. So when we're done brooming, you know, we're going to run, we don't typically run uh, the joiner down the joint again. The joint is all nice and nice and clean right now. So we'll leave it like that most of the time. We won't picture frame it, but we do usually run the edger back around the edge. You'll see that coming up right here at the end. And that leaves that edge, just it gives it a real nice finished look in my opinion. Now, for you guys looking to get into the concrete business, if you want to learn how to do this, my private membership, the Concrete Underground, that's where I teach people how to do this. The link for that is down below. So, you know, check that out. I got over 140 members in there right now going through my trainings. Plus, I'm in there to help and teach people uh, not only about like the work, how to do the work, but also about, you know, if you need help starting your own business, how to do estimating and pricing and all that stuff. I've been doing it for 40 years, so if I can help you with that, that's all in the Concrete Underground, guys. You know, So make sure you check that out. There, you can see how consistent looking that broom finish is. That's key. You know, you want that broom finish to look all the same when you're done. Um, and don't fall, don't fall over like I do. But uh, if it doesn't look all the same, then when it cures out, it's going to look funny too. So that's... That's the key. The shade here was helping us a little bit. You can see how the shade's still on most of this. So this is still pretty early. This is probably like 9 o'clock in the morning right here. We're doing this. It was setting up pretty good. So there's Darren putting on the finishing touches. 
So again, guys, thanks for watching. Come on back. We'll see you on the next one.